This ghost story happened back in Laos during the 1960s to 70s. My mom told me that on my father's side of the family, my great-grandma, who was my dad's grandma, had passed away when they were very young. She was a very caring person and loved her grandchildren very much. In Laos, the types of houses were made mostly with dry bamboo, stick strings, and long stringy leaves which were used to cover the roofs. The house which they lived in had a gap towards the roof of the house. Most of the houses were built the same way to provide lighting during the day. It was late at night, cold and rainy. My grandparents just got done scolding my aunts and uncles for misbehaving. After they were done scolding them, they had dinner, cleaned up, and got ready for bed. My grandparents tucked in all the kids to sleep. Some of the kids would sleep on one bed, and the others would share the bed with my grandparents. My aunt Ia was sleeping across from my grandpa. However, one of the younger siblings was probably sleeping in between my aunt Ia and my grandma. A few hours passed by and my grandma reached her arm over to check on my aunt Ia, but to her surprise, she wasn't there. It was so dark, my grandma started to panic. She lit a candle and searched between all the kids but could not find my aunt Ia anywhere. She kept calling and calling for her, but my aunt did not answer her once. After a few minutes had passed, my grandparents heard a cry from outside of the house. It was my aunt. She called out for my grandma. My grandparents then hurried out to the front door and opened it. There sitting on the little stool was my aunt, shivering under the roof edge of the house. My grandma said to her, What are you doing outside? It's cold out here. How did you get out here? The doors are locked and blocked from the inside. My aunt told her, It was grandma who took me. She missed me very much. She took me through the gap above the house. She missed me very much and wanted to visit me. She told me she had to go back, so she told me to call for you so you guys can take me back inside. After my grandparents heard what happened, they didn't respond much, except they went to pick her up and, to their surprises, my aunt's body temperature was very warm, like someone had been holding her for a while. Normally, when a child has been sitting outside in the cold weather for a while, they would have gotten sick or been very cold. And that was the story of my great-grandma who came to visit my aunt. This is a story I heard from my grandma. Many years ago, back in Laos before the war, maybe around the 50s or 60s, there was a couple that had parted ways so the wife had the custody of their child. Now, the husband was left by himself. He continued his daily life tending the farm every day. But this one day, he decided to stay and sleep at the farmhouse, hoping that he could finish tending his farm in the morning. That day, while he was farming, he sang a melody about how life is so lonely without a wife and that if he still had a wife, she would have already made lunch and bring him water and tell him to rest. Later that day, when night came, he heard from afar by the trails a beautiful melody in a woman's voice replying back to his words he said earlier. At that point, he realized that it could not be a woman. Instead, it must have been a banzong. A few minutes passed by, and the melody and singing came closer and closer. That's when the man loaded his rifle and got ready. The banzong then sang the melody and circled around the farmhouse three times before stopping at the door. There, the banzong knocked on the door. It was probably about 10 to 15 seconds when he started shooting and emptied the rounds. While shooting at the door, he heard loud cries as the banzong ran off, moaning and agonizing in pain. There, he loaded another full clip into his rifle, just in case the demon came back. There he lay, trying to sleep, but he could not. When morning came, he waited until the sun was up at its highest. He then walked out of the broken door, and there was black and red cloth with a green sash. Blood and pieces of rotten flesh was everywhere on the site. 
So terrified, he ran home, told all of his relatives about what happened. The man convinced his relatives to go and check on his farm. When they got there, they followed the rotten blood trail to under a big rock, and when they lifted up the rock, there lied a deformed cat with vertical eyes, dead. Knowing that it was some kind of Bansong, his relatives then helped him finish off his farm and never went back. Interested in sharing your stories? Submit them to momchronicles at gmail.com or in the description below. Here is the next story. Thank you. My uncle met a girl from another village far away. It takes around four to five days to travel to her village on foot. He and this girl had been dating and he got her pregnant. When her parents found out, they sent her to live at the farmhouse. My uncle never informed my grandparents about the issue or about her until it was about time for her to give birth. When my grandpa found out, he insisted that they go take her to live with them. On the way there, just as they were walking on the dirt road, they encountered a green snake. The green snake slithered right in front of them and then skid away. My grandfather saw this as a bad omen, but they had no choice because they were already halfway there. Plus, my uncle's girlfriend was already going to be due in a week or two. Thus, they carried on. When they got to her parents' house, they paid respect and begged her parents for her. Her parents gave in and allowed my uncle to take her home. My grandpa agreed that they'll come back to do the wedding after the baby's born. Along the way back, they kept on hearing growls and seeing claw marks on dirt and trees. They ignored this and carried on. Three days after they got home, the wife gave birth to an eerie baby boy. Everyone was afraid of the baby, except for my grandpa. After giving birth, my uncle's new wife became crazy and had psychological problems. She started talking and laughing at the wall. Every time she eats, she'd eat a lot and be staring at the wall continuously. People would ask her if she knew who they were, and she'd say, Yes, a comb, or, Oh, you're a tree stump, and started laughing like a maniac. There was also a time when they were eating, and she suddenly threw up a giant chunk of blood. Anyways, after living with my uncle for not even a month, she passed away. As for her baby, her baby is alive. However, the baby would appear blue or yellow from time to time. According to my mom, the baby looks dead every now and then. Then the baby soon passed away too. Now, when my uncle's wife died, she died smiling. Everyone was so afraid of her, they couldn't dress her properly. They wanted to get her family to come, but it take 8 to 10 days, and that's far too long. One more thing was that she started to smell. Fortunately, one of her uncles lived in a town only 6 hours away, so they decided to go and fetch him. When he came and took a look at her, he slapped her on the face and said, Daughter, if you are not dead and are only playing with us, get up this instantly. If you are dead, then please die nicely. Right after he said those words, her smile slowly melted away and everyone finally found the courage to dress her up. When it was time for her burial, my father and his brothers carried her on a stretcher. Along the way, a tiger jumped out of the bushes right in front of them, took a look at them, and slowly moved away. They buried her nearby in a small creek, Every now and then, whenever someone would go fetch water, especially during sundown at that creek, they'd experience someone throwing twigs and dirt at them. They said that the reason why the wife died is that she possibly met a tiger while she was set to live at the farmhouse. She was very lonely and depressed, and she'd sing every day while she was living there. As for her baby, her baby was a bad omen, only sent to kill her and take her life away. Dang, that's a crazy story. 
When my uncle was a little kid, he witnessed a woman being possessed. He said that his dad was a shaman and it was the most horrifying experience he would never forget. This is the story that he told me. Back in Laos, my uncle and some friends were playing nearby their house. They heard the chickens crowing and acting all crazy. Out of curiosity, they decided to go and check it out. When they got to the chicken coop, there they saw a woman tearing off the chicken's head and eating it like she was starving and hadn't ate in days. My uncle and his friends screamed at the sight of this. Hearing their screams, the woman turned around and growled at them like a mad dog. My uncle realized that it was a woman from their village whom he heard had been acting crazy for days. They all took off running as fast as they could. When they reached my uncle's house, he told his father what they had just witnessed. His father then told some other men from their village and they left to see if what my uncle and his friends saw was true. When they got to the chicken coop, the woman had her pants down and looked like she had just taken a dump and was circling on her crab on all fours and was growling like a mad animal. Wow, that was absurd. The men grabbed her and took her to the nearest house. My uncle's father, who was a shaman, said that she had been possessed by a very evil and powerful demon. The woman was so strong it took them about six men to tie her down. For days, they had to keep a close eye on her and do all kinds of rituals. My uncle said that one day he was being nosy and took a peek into the room the possessed woman was in. He said that the room was cold as ice, and there the woman was yelling, cursing, and spitting at the people who were watching over her. This incident went on for days. When the woman was finally relieved from the demon, she couldn't remember anything that had happened. It sounds like a movie, huh? Well, things like this do really happen in real life, especially in Laos. People just don't like to talk about it. Yeah, I'd be scared too if I saw a woman with her pants down, crapping and circling around like that, man. I remember as a child, my father used to share his stories with my siblings and I as bedtime stories. In a small village in Laos, there lived a family that had a daughter who had been terminally ill for days. The father passed along a verbal message to a master shaman named Gao who lived a few villages away and asked if he could come in Oneng for his daughter. A time was set for that same evening as it was an urgent cry for help. That evening at dusk, Gao and his entourage traveled on foot to their destination. He suddenly felt a sharp sense of pain so he told his party to go ahead without him and that he'll meet them there when he was done doing his business. All the while inside the home of the terminally ill daughter, their energy was indescribable. The family was beginning to lose hope, holding on to a thread of a miracle. She was fighting for her life. She would breathe and then fall into a state of unconsciousness, then regain consciousness and gasp for oxygen. As Gao made his way to his destination, he could see the family hut from a few feet away. What he saw would soon dictate the fate of this sick girl. From the side of the hut, he saw a tiger's back end. He stood there petrified as he observed the tiger popping his head out from inside the hut. The tiger would then lean his head forward in through the wall with his head disappearing into the house. As he stood there in observation, every time the tiger had his head inside, Gao could hear the volume of the cries and the screaming of grief increasing from inside the house. As soon as the tiger removed his head, there was a sigh of relief. What was going on was that every time the tiger had his head inside the house, the terminally ill daughter fell into a state of unconsciousness. My father said that the reason for this was that the tiger was playing with the family's emotion. It was yanking their daughter's lifeline around and every time the tiger had his head outside the hut, the daughter would regain consciousness and fight for her dear life. 
Gao was able to see the tiger because the tiger had been too focused on making himself invisible to the family that he let his guard down and made himself visible to those he was not aware of. The master shaman then made his way into the house, shaking frantically. Gao told the father that the shaking was not from his usual shaman practice, but from being so scared of what he had just witnessed. He could not keep a clear focus during the ritual. That evening, they could not do much and came home. The next morning, the news had passed throughout the small villages that the daughter had passed away that night. Witnessing my father, how poised he was when faced with similar situations like such, I often wonder if Gao had pulled himself together and kept a clear focus, would he have been able to save that poor family's daughter? There was a boy named Dua who lived in a small village in Laos. His family gardened and raised chickens and pigs for a living. Dua was a good son and helped his parents with the daily gardening and feeding the animals. He grew an attachment to some of the chickens that he had helped take care of, but he was particularly fond of one baby chicken. He raised it and looked after that baby chick as if it was his own child. Everywhere he went, that baby chick went with him too. One day, he decided to take his baby chick with him to school. On the way to school, as his baby chick was walking and pecking the ground behind him, he heard someone throwing pebbles and rocks at it. He paused and looked around to see where the rocks were coming from. He didn't see anyone, just the dirt path that he had been traveling on and the tall trees all along both sides of that path. He thought to himself that perhaps he was just hearing things and continued on his way to school. As he was walking on, he kept turning back to see if his chicken was following him, and it was. He only walked about a few yards before he heard rocks hitting the ground behind him again. His baby chick clucked loudly. He immediately stopped and quickly turned around to see who it was that was throwing rocks at his chicken. Again, he saw nothing but the dirt path and the thickly lined trees on both sides of the path. He quickly walked over, picked up his baby chicken, and then hurried along to school. At the end of the school day, instead of going straight home, Dua decided to go to his family's garden, which was further down from the school and in the opposite direction of his village. His parents usually gardened the whole day and would come home right before it started to get dark. Dua remembered that his mother was having back pains all day yesterday, so he decided to go and surprise them and help out before going home to do his homework. As he got to the garden, carrying his chicken in one arm and his lunch bag in the other, he didn't see his parents anywhere. He walked over to the little tent shelter that his dad made, and they weren't there either. He then told himself that they probably went home early because of his mother's back pain. He bent down and put the baby chicken on the ground and called for it to follow him. There they walked back towards the school, which seemed like forever. When they finally reached the school, everyone was already gone. He continued walking towards his village with the baby chicken trailing behind him. It was starting to get dark, therefore he told himself to carry the baby chick so they would get home sooner. Just before he was about to turn around to pick up his chicken, he heard rocks being thrown behind him again. His chicken was clucking and flapping his wings wildly like before. He quickly turned around and this time he saw little rocks flying at his chicken from behind the trees. As soon as he saw this, it stopped. He angrily walked over to the baby chicken and picked it up. He looked at the trees to see who the troublemaker was but there was no one there. This got him upset for some reason. Holding tightly onto his baby chicken in one arm, he dropped his empty lunch bag and picked up a few rocks. He then threw them all at once into the forest behind the trees. He shouted and yelled out into the forest, You want to die, you fool? With saying that, he quickly ran home. His parents were home, worried and waiting for him. They were finally relieved that he finally made it home since it was now dark outside. He didn't tell them about what happened with the baby chicken, 
but just that he had gone to look for his parents at the garden. That night, when he was sleeping, he had a dream. It was a familiar place with a familiar sound. The sound was of little pebbles hitting the ground, and the place was the very same spot that he had stopped to throw the rocks back into the forest. This time, he was standing on the dirt path by himself, alone and in the dark. The sounds of little rocks hitting the ground continued. He turned to look at the group of tall trees that he had thrown the rocks into earlier, and all he could see was the outline of these trees and the darkness behind them. And then, he saw something. It appeared in slow motion, a very small, thin figure with long, frizzy hair. It was holding on to the tree and slowly peeked its head out and looked at him. Those red eyes glowed brightly in the dark, and it let out a low, sounding purr. This thing, whatever it was, then smiled at him with its sharp, drooling teeth. He woke up with his whole body drenched in sweat. He felt his forehead and realized that he was burning up with a fever. His head felt dizzy, and slowly, he laid back down to sleep. The next morning, his parents woke up and found his lifeless body. His mother, from the shock of her son's unexpected death, let out a loud cry that echoed throughout the entire village. No one to this day knew what Ndua died from, but everyone swears that the morning they heard his mother's cry, they also heard a soft purring sound coming from the direction of the forest leading to the school. This story sounds fake because if Ndua died, how could he tell his story about his dream and everything? Alright, anyways, it sounds kind of cool. I like the chicken though. That was kind of cute.